I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're ranking the hardest boss in each Soulsborne game, from Demon Souls up to Elden Ring. Because while I've certainly discussed which boss fights I enjoy the most from each of the games, I never really took difficulty into account in my rankings. And while at some point I would love to do a full Soulsborne difficulty ranking series, I'd like to involve you, the viewers, in that. So for now, I'll just be going through each game and selecting what I feel was my hardest boss from my recent playthroughs. Without further ado, the hardest bosses in each Soulsborne game ranked. And be sure to let me know your hardest boss from each game in the comments below. Starting off our list with Demon Souls, I don't consider many of the bosses to be particularly hard. Perhaps you could say the Vanguard Demon in the tutorial, as you'll arrive with barely any health or stats to withstand its attacks, and a single false move could send you straight to the Nexus without any dinner. The Armored Spider can be tricky if you don't know its mechanics, as it can stun you pretty easily, and you can get caught in a loop of dangerous attacks as you try to make your approach. I could also talk about the Flame Lurker, but honestly, I think his difficulty has been neutered if subsequent Souls games releasing. Or if you're looking for jank, the Maneaters of 3-2 are infamous for their botched AI that just refuses to function, forcing you to play a game of hide and seek as they decide whether they want to approach you or fly into the abyss. But at the end of the day, no boss has quite the moveset to work around than False King Alant the Archdemon of 1-4, and the last major challenge you'll face before completing the game. Greeting you with a scowl as he surveys the ruined kingdom below, your goal is to slay him and save Boletaria from its fate. The organ music pipes up, and from behind, you notice ghostly wings forming around the king, an intimidating sight to be sure. Of all the bosses, he has the most variety to his sword swings and attacks, able to fire wind slices through the air to catch you off guard, and if he needs to close distance, he can dash towards you with a thrust. His deadliest attack for me is his grab, which, if you're hit by, will drain you of one of your soul levels. For that mechanic alone, False King Alant deserves recognition of difficulty, as I don't think any other boss in the franchise has the power to do that. Now, for me, he still wasn't terribly hard, I beat him on my first try, but imagine being new to Souls games. Dark Souls hasn't released yet, and Demon Souls is all you know. False King Alant likely was a deadly foe for his time of release, and with that context and with his infamy, he earns his spot as the hardest boss of Demon Souls. The original Dark Souls has no shortage of fights that I would consider hard to some extent, the Capra Demon, where the biggest challenge involves how you enter the arena because of those damn doggos. And if the camera doesn't play ball, you're going to be doing that boss run back quite a bit. Knight Artorius is a brutal duel to the death with one of the famed Knights of Gwyn, corrupted by the Abyss and relentlessly forced to fight us while we attempt to put him out of his misery. His fast sword swings and high mobility make healing very difficult. Or what about the classic Ornstein and Smo, where having to fight Ornstein's confused AI is over half the battle? What with the players back in the day not being aware of how to use those pillars to make the gank fight a little easier? Yet for me, there was one Dark Souls boss that felt so difficult that I never beat it on my original playthrough, instead waiting many long years before coming back to take it down and feeling damn good about myself. That boss is Black Dragon Calamite, the optional battle of the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. Calamite has the benefit of a large health pool, which means even with a fully upgraded weapon, you're not going to do terribly large amounts of HP damage. He's also magic resistant, so if you're a mage build like I tried last year, you're not going to get very far without being very stubborn in regards to how you utilize your magic. On top of this, Calamite is far more mobile than most Dark Souls bosses, utilizing his various sweeps and flame breaths to catch slower players off guard. I struggled to avoid many of his moves while learning his patterns, and first time players will likely feel challenged by having to keep track of a moveset that you can't always see. 
that fly up, flame breath down attack will always catch me off guard at least once. With every other boss, I have their patterns down and know my moments to attack. With Calamite, there's always the fear that I'll be clipped by his tail and claws, or gripped in his grab attack that causes you to take more damage. For that alone, hardest boss in Dark Souls. When looking at Dark Souls 2, there are really only a handful of bosses that come to mind out of the 40 plus boss roster. From the base game, I'd say the Smelter Demon is certainly to be considered, what with his chip damage when you get too close to his flames, as well as his slower moveset that feels like the first instance of FromSoft testing delayed attacks. Though if he had a less torturous boss run back, people would probably be acing this boss after a few attempts. Dark Lurker is another I considered, given his magic has the ability to do large amounts of damage, and despite his formulaic moveset, once his clone enters the mix, any sense of safety goes out of the window. But like Smelter, I feel Dark Lurker is hard more due to his entry requirement of going from the dark chasm of old every time, which can be a resource drain. No, for a traditionally hard boss, we have to look no further than the DLCs. And for this slot, I actually have two picks, and you guys in the comments can tell me which you think is harder. First off, the Fume Knight. With his long sword swings and surprisingly long reach, even rolling behind him doesn't make you 100% safe once that Fume Knight Ultra Greatsword is colliding with your neck. He's one of the few bosses who can consistently punish you for healing, especially in Phase 2 where his damage is buffed significantly. There's no real trick to dodging him, which is why he makes this list over Sir Alon, for example, who you can avoid if you constantly dodge inwards and to the right. With Fume Knight, it's all about learning the full moveset and not making any mistakes. It helps if your DPS is also high like me, because if you don't disable all the smelter wedges around his arena, he can start healing up health, which makes the fight harder as a result. Secondly, we have the Burnt Ivory King, who is on this list with a rather large asterisk, because a majority of players will fight him after rescuing the Lois Knights from Elium Lois, so they can shut down the portals spawning the charred Lois Knights in the boss arena. But if you decide you want to fight the boss without disabling those portals like a madman would, well, it's not hard to figure out what would happen next. With no way to close the portals, you'd have to survive an onslaught of charred Lois Knights all trailed onto you, and when the boss comes out, you're fighting a small army. I'm not trying that, ever, but I have to imagine it's pretty difficult to pull off. So which of my two bosses for Dark Souls 2 do you think is the hardest boss? Fume Knight, who's hard by default, or the Burnt Ivory King, who can be hard depending on when you fight him? Tell me in the comments below. If I could just take a few moments of your time, I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. I don't know if we can do it, but I'd love to try. Look at how many of my viewers aren't subscribed. Let's rectify that. Be sure to parry that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my weekly content. Back to the video. I feel like me ranking difficulty for Bloodborne is such a weird concept, because I've had such a different experience when it comes to the bosses in this game in comparison to everyone else. It's safe to say our main contenders, not including Chalice Dungeons, as I don't have that footage, and I don't feel like throwing the defiled Amygdala under the bus today. So I'm gonna go with a hot take. Maybe I'll pick Ludwig the Accursed with his incredibly difficult to read phase one, featuring a fast paced aggressive moveset that can tear through your health bar immediately. When he jumps onto the ceiling, I feel true fear. Though he's weakened in this ranking by, in my opinion, a much easier second phase with attacks that are more telegraphed and traditional. I could pick the Orphan, based on him being the most aggressive boss in the game, with an insane amount of reach with the retractable placenta, as well as his various projectiles and lightning he can gain once the second phase starts. But then my personal experience with the Orphan contradicts that, because I fought him three times, once in my original playthrough where I beat him first try, and twice in my footage playthrough where I died on my first attempt, beat him on my second. So instead, 
I'm going back to the early game and selecting the boss that always gives me the most trouble when I return to Bloodborne from a long break. And that's Father Gascoigne. Say what you will about him once you're a master hunter, but for every new player who walks into Yharnam, he acts as a brutal wall that will block you from the rest of the game until you overcome him. He fights with the same methods as you, wielding the Hunter Axe starting weapon, using its trick form for his second phase, and his gun is very good at staggering you when you don't want it to followed by a bestial third phase that I find incredibly difficult due to the uneven terrain in the graveyard. He's killed me more times in this form than I care to admit. You can use the music box on him to get a few stuns off, but it's not a foolproof strategy, just a slight handicap in your favor. Even if you learn his parry timings, you still have to deal with that aggressive third phase that teaches you dodge inwards, attack, don't be passive, and that's what I struggle with the most when I return to Bloodborne. So for killing me more than any other boss in my Bloodborne footage playthrough, Father Gascoigne is my hardest Bloodborne boss. Once again, From Software DLC often creates some of the toughest fights in their respective games because they're endgame content tailored for the highest leveled players. And unlike my Bloodborne entry, I can't think of a Dark Souls 3 base game fight that could topple the difficulty of the DLCs. Nameless King maybe, as when he first came onto the scene, his delayed attacks in his second phase caused a lot of trouble, and players who start their journey with Dark Souls 3 will suffer that same fate. But if you're an avid Souls player who's played Elden Ring recently, you're used to delayed attacks at this point, it becomes a sixth sense. So I considered Dark Eater Medir for this list, due to his high damage output and staggeringly large health pool, but I feel once you know the strategy to hit his head, it just becomes a case of learning how to avoid each move, and Medir's kit isn't terribly large, so that's fairly doable. Still difficult, but not quite the most difficult for me. Sister Freed was an option too, but my difficulty in her fight comes from her Black Flame Frieda form, so despite being a three phase boss, I think her first and second phases are fairly easy once you know how they work. New players of course I can see struggling a lot, but for me personally, once you learn her phase one, you'll only rarely be taking damage, and phase two is just smacking Ariandel in the ass. No. My hardest boss in Dark Souls 3, and this will surprise you, is the Demon Prince. I consider this to be one of the best gank bosses in Soulsborne, and I remember when this DLC first came out that I was stuck on these guys for a very long time, because not only do they have a rather large health pool, but learning to manage their attacks and avoiding the poison for phase one is a lot to take in. The real difficulty kicker is phase two though, depending on which demon you slayed last, you'll get a slightly different moveset. One uses lasers, the other uses firestorms. And let me tell you, I refuse to fight the firestorm version because I can't handle those attacks. I always default to laser because I've had more practice with that now from Madeir and Placidus Axe. On top of the phase two, the Demon Prince has a massive health pool, so you're still just chipping away at the boss as you fight, and his mobility is leagues above your own. I find myself having to run after him constantly, and while in this footage playthrough I beat the Demon Prince first try, it wasn't easy. It was one of the toughest fights to manage, and I never felt in control at any point. And that lack of control translates into a higher difficulty for me. Let me know your thoughts, because I suspect more people will be highlighting Madeir for this spot. Ah, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. The game where bosses are incredibly difficult, until they're incredibly easy. Now, I'm not including the inner versions of Genichiro, Owl, or Ishin, as I haven't had the opportunity to play and master those fights, so I'll let you know my thoughts on those in a future ranking down the line. So my three hardest fights in no particular order would be the Demon of Hatred, Owl Father, and Ishin the Sword Saint. 
All three fights are incredibly difficult, but for completely different reasons. The Demon of Hatred by far was the boss I took the most attempts on during my footage playthrough. His unblockable claw drags caught me off guard far too often, his attacks can be bombastic and feel almost impossible to avoid, and if you're not keenly aware of what his kit can do, you'll likely get a fireball to the face. His third phase especially is brutal, as he can use the move that blocks you into a small portion of the arena, cutting off your mobility. Yet with the Flame Shield Umbrella and the Malcontent Whistle, the fight goes from extremely difficult to fairly manageable. Ishin the Sword Saint is such an amazing final boss who forces you to get good at every phase to have the resources to make it to his final blow in his fourth phase, because I do include the Genichiro portion of this fight as part of this battle. His sword attacks are easily dodgeable with a bit of practice, so his toughness comes from when he gets his spear. His mobility increases, he gets a Glock that he can pepper you with, and in the third phase, he can use a lightning, which can be hard to reverse depending on the height difference between you in the arena, as the arena isn't flat. It's hilly. Yet you can still use shinobi tools to distract him if you really need to, and the arena is large enough that you can run to the other side and heal if you have no other option. Which is why Al Father gets my hardest boss in Sekiro Spot, because unlike the other two options, he cancels out a majority of your shinobi prosthetics, and it feels like the game encourages you to fight him as purely as possible. From the way he can Makiri counter your thrust attacks, so no heavies from you, to his insane combo potential that can be incredibly difficult to deflect or dodge through to his second phase that has you needing to keep track of his spirit owl on top of everything else, and sometimes the owl will just fly off camera to really screw with your head. I haven't found a definitive way to handle that aside from just sprinting in a direction and not stopping. I had more deaths to Owl Father Phase 1 than any other boss if we include both this playthrough and my old playthroughs of Sekiro and especially compared to his Great Shinobi Owl variant, which is much easier. Yeah, he goes in here. He wants to kill you, so it's satisfying sending him to his grave, and I'm terrified of the inner father fight given everyone says it's the best in the game. We'll see one day, we'll see. I wonder what the hardest boss in Elden Ring could be. It's Melania, what else do you want from me? She took me 141 attempts this time around with no spirit summons, no bleed, and even then I still had to use the god skin peeler's special ability to do a little damage here and there. I have seen this woman carve so many players a new one over the last year. She has the speed of a Valkyrie, the lifesteal of a Bloodborne player, and the most broken move in all of Soulsborne, Waterfowl Dance mixed with lifesteal. She is an absolute unit who will keep you on her phase one for as long as she feels like, because even with her low poise, unless you come in with a very specific build tailored towards screwing her over, you're going to have a major tough time, and most players like to beat bosses with their chosen weapons they grow attached to. Melania says, no no, if you want to beat me, get in the meta, or fuck off. With the exception of my boyfriend who, as I've mentioned in the past, took out Melania over the course of four days with a great shield. The man will turtle behind everything, I've tried talking him out of it, but he's proved me wrong. Melania's moveset is learnable, but that doesn't necessarily make it fully reactable. She has so many ways to combo from one move into another that she can keep you on your toes and make you waste a ton of healing, even though you're just one hit away from getting her to a second phase and then her prosthetic flurry attack gets all of that health back and you scream! Her phase 2 is easier, as she has more moves that leave her vulnerable, but with so much going on visually, it's hard to keep track of just what she's up to. Butterflies are flying everywhere, and suddenly there's a giant flower, and she's bursting, and now my scarlet rot meter is building, and uh, I'm traumatized. <laughs> She is Melania, Blade of Mikola, and she's never known defeat, and I'm inclined to agree, because by god, even when I beat her and the serotonin hits, I know I couldn't replicate that even if I wanted to. Every other boss in this game I feel can be learned to a science. Melania can be learned, 
but you still need every single one of your instincts to survive in a way that I don't think any other Soulsborne boss comes close to. Is she the hardest boss in Soulsborne though? I'll leave that one for another day. And that's my hardest boss from each Soulsborne game. Let me know yours down below in the comments and thank you so much once again for watching. I'm still on vacation at the moment, but I will be back soon and I'll be getting more Soulsborne content and more Zelda content out for you guys. So be sure to parry that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my weekly content. My socials are on screen now, feel free to follow where you feel comfortable. I would recommend my Twitter, let's be real, it's the only active social I have. I really need to edit this graphic at some point. And a massive shout out to my Patreons over on Patreon, I mixed that thing up again. I really hope that this is up to date and then nobody unsubbed from my Patreon because I can't change the graphic because I'm editing this in June, but this is coming out in August. Ugh. And I will see you guys next week for another Soulsborne video. Adios.